What's up, Facebook Live? It's Bobby Penn hanging out here in my crib, my humble abode. I am bringing you into my apartment to teach you everything I know and my social media friends know about social media management and marketing. Welcome to, in case you missed it, Social Sundays. That's what I-C-Y-M-I stands for. Um, And every Sunday, you can tune in right here on Facebook Live at Bobby Penn. Um, And yeah, I'll be showing you whatever I think is funny on social media this week, as well as talking to digital media professionals who use social media for a living. So I'm talking publicists, uh, reporters, online editors, which is my job title, um, as well as other really cool people, maybe even some celebrities. Uh, So make sure you guys check this out. So to kick things off, I get asked this all the time in my DMs and in private messages. Everybody wants to know, how did Bobby Pin get started? Well, um, I used to always get in trouble in school for talking too much. <laughs> um, so I felt like it was a no-brainer to go into media. And I remember being in high school trying to figure out what I wanted to study in college. Um, so music and entertainment has always been a really big deal in my life. And I... Um, knew that I wanted to be able to merge the two. So when I took my PSATs, I don't know if you remember, but they kind of give you ideas based on your results of what you could and should study in college. And a magazine writer came up for me. So as I'm applying to schools, I'm looking into the best journalism schools. Um, My aunt, who's one of my largest influences, uh, studied journalism, or excuse me, was a reporter for the New York Times for 30-something years, so I loved her lifestyle, and I would go to New York and visit her occasionally. And I got to see some really cool things, so I was like, I want to be like Aunt Lena, and I'm going to be a journalist. So um, I applied to Temple University, got directly into their School of Communications magazine writing program, and for me, that sealed the deal. That, That means that was what I was supposed to do. So I get there, and I remember my first lecture being told, you're crazy if you're sitting in this classroom right now studying print journalism because it's a dying industry. Um, and as you know, of course, we still have magazines and newspapers around today. But um, the industry certainly has shifted to digital. So I'm very grateful to Temple University for um, definitely grateful for Temple University for preparing me for the shift to digital where I was taught um, AV skills, how to capture audio, how to capture and edit video, and all that jazz. Um, (laughs) So yeah, fast forward a couple years and I started the BobbyPen.com, which is my blog, where initially I was focused on interviewing um, up and coming talent in the Washington DC area, which is where I am from. And I don't even know where to go from there. Life kind of took its course, and I was afforded more and more opportunities. Um, Give me a second, guys. This is the first episode, so, of course, everything is not going to go perfect. I am trying to get my guest on. Pulling up J.R. Bang right now. If you don't know who he is, you're about to get to know him today. Okay. Bang! You good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not too much, man. We're live. Uh, waiting for the monitor behind me to switch, but uh, that's how we doing it. So, you in oh, this thing? Yeah. You see you back there? Oh, I'm on the big screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Everybody, say what's up to Jr. Bang. What's up? <laughs> Nothing. I am teaching people. Basically, I'm filling them in oh. on how I got into digital media. Um, so I'm just rambling, waiting for you to get here. So why don't you go ahead and get started and let us know how you got um, introduced to digital media because your story is a little different from mine. Um, by accident. Um, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say by accident. Like Everybody's involved with digital media and don't even know it. So... Whether you were on Black Planet back in the day or MySpace, if you was Hispanic and you was sticking it on Mente.com or any other website, you've been involved with digital media and and don't even know it. Um, But for me, I guess it kind of started when I was doing music and making sure that digitally uh, me and the whole music was getting out. Then from there... Um, after 
Um, I worked at Best Buy for about eight years. Um, and my man Cam Coach was like, yo, you should come to this broadcast school with me. So I was like, all right, I ain't doing nothing else. Um, so from there, um, we were doing a radio show, NLE Radio, and uh, we wanted to make ourselves different than all of the other students who's doing a radio show. So um, I created a website, nleradio.com, where we would put all of our content, local content, um, and um, podcasts of our show, not knowing that that was podcasting uh, then. So once I graduated um, from school, uh, Sam Colsey got him the online editor job in Indianapolis. Our girl, AC, she got the uh, online editor job in Detroit. Um, I interviewed for D.C. and St. Louis, um, didn't get it, so I was helping run an internet radio station in Chicago called NLE Radio, I mean, excuse me, not NLE Radio, but with the Underground.com, I had to board the show for it, um, and from there, um, about five years later, I become the, um, the online editor for... St. Louis and then D.C. So that is my track through digital media. I love it. I love how you you were able to merge, I guess, your two passions, um, one accidentally and the other very intentionally, to become J.R. Bang. So I wanted you to be my guest because for the last, at least, for the last year and a half, you have been responsible for making all of the digital content for WKYS, go viral. I mean, like, millions and millions of views consistently. Like, what is the key to making content grow legs to reach millions of people? Uh, one, it goes to the content itself. Is it good? Is it viable? Um, like, for example, um, the biggest win I might have had was, was um, in Dallas, actually. Um, I was in Dallas for the finale of Empire Season 1. Okay. So I was still learning the aspects of the job and everything. Um, so I ended up putting that. Somebody created a meme of the little boy on, um, on Soul Food. He was crying. <laughs> and I was saying that um, this is how people are going to be at the end of Empire. So the next morning, I look and it got a million um, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I, I guess this is a win. I hit my man Cam close, and he was like, yeah, you know, we got to talk about this on the, uh, on the call tomorrow. And it turned out to be a win, but it wasn't necessarily beneficial to the website because I didn't put a link on it until, you know, I did, and it worked out. But that was, like, one of the biggest wins that I had. And it's really just about the content and, 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 who you, and knowing who you reach. Like, I'll say this. And, I mean, you know this more than just as much as I do. But a lot of people don't know their demographics. You know, they don't know if, you know, their Facebook page is reaching 18 to 34, uh, male or female. Uh, they don't even know their age group to be for even to look at it. So when they put stuff on their Facebook page or, um, or they even their personal Facebook page, they don't know who they're reaching. They don't know the stuff that they're throwing up. So you really just got to know who your demographic is and who you're trying to reach. So if you know even just on your personal Facebook page that you got a lot of hood people on there, and you're trying to reach them, then you should put a lot of hood stuff on there. If your demographic is 25 to 54, uh, but it's mostly women, then it's skewed more toward the 30 and 40 range than anything. You don't necessarily want to put Nicki Minaj stuff up there. You want to put... Um, stuff that fits that demo. So the content that I get, I make sure that, like for interviews and such, I make sure that I cut a piece that's going to fit that demo and hopefully it reaches the right people and it reaches them. Then they click, share, comment, react, and then from it, those viral. I love it. So just being transparent, my least favorite job of managing digital content is the numbers. How can you make studying analytics more digestible for the creative that really doesn't want to have to deal with the strategy, I guess. It's, 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 my, fa it's my least favorite part of the job as well. Um, shout out to my man, Emil Barnes, who's our digital video content producer. 
Um, since he's been around, I've been able to do more creatively. But at the same time, you can do all the creative stuff. And if you don't know who you're reaching, you don't know the strategy part, then it doesn't matter. So I think of it like a video game. I'm a sports head. Um, and like most of the video games that I play, it's mostly like sports. So it's Madden the 2K. So, you know, if, if, if I'm watching basketball and, I'm, and I know I'm about to have a debate or an argument with somebody, and I need to know more than just, you know, how much somebody's scoring and rebounding per game. I need to know, like, points per 36 minutes and all that other nerdy stuff. So that's what the analytics is. So if I'm talking to somebody about, you know, these digital numbers, I can easily say, oh, yeah, this post reach um, a million people. And some people will be like, oh, yeah, that's dope. Oh, wow. But I need to be able to speak to... 10 second views as opposed to full views. I need to be able to speak to the reactions and the comments more than the reach because nowadays Facebook, you know, they don't mean on pages, they only show really like 5% of the people, show to like 5% of the people that's on there anyway. So with that being said, like, I need to tell people like, yo, you need to get your, your, your comments up. Go up in there and comment with the people, start a conversation and, and watch those numbers go up. And even like on the website basis, you know, just because somebody just because somebody clicked on your site, you know, if they stay thirty seconds, you know, they went and they left. So making sure you do the things that you need to do um, by putting related links in galleries and other content, so on and so forth, on there, just to keep people on um, your website and being able to look at Google Analytics and and, and speak to that. Um, so I just the way that I get to it is pretty much like a video game, you know. I'm a stat person when it comes to videos and video games and sports at the end of the day. So I, I try to just think of it like that. And then it becomes kind of fun yeah, yeah. because now you're looking at it like, okay, how can I twist these people's head today? And I bring that on my Facebook page as well. So yeah, you just, you just got to think of more fun ways um, to, to, to do those type of things. But it can be boring. It could be boring as hell. <laughs> definitely. Um, so I heard you speaking before. Part of this job is definitely a little bit of um, psychology even, right? Like, n- how do you know what content will work for the different demographics, right? Like, what I mean by that is, I guess, how much of a trendsetter are you? How much are you kind of watching what the trends are on social media to know how to reach um a mature urban AC demographic as opposed to the young college kids right now with the mainstream hip hop stations? Right. It, you know what? One of the things that I do is I utilize my Facebook page. So I think of sociology and I think of your own personal Facebook page is one big pot. So, like, um, it irritates me when people say, yeah, on my Facebook, uh, like on Facebook, people does this. On Facebook, people does that. You don't have all of the people in the world on your Facebook page. Like I think I have 3,100 people on my Facebook page. That's a lot. And not all 3,100 of those people are active. So I look at the people that are active. So if you follow me on Facebook, I will purposely throw things out there just to get people's reaction and use them as a test. So when I throw it on my station's platform or even my platform, I know how to twist it because that's how those people react. That's how those people commented on it. So instead of me just posting the story as is with the title as is, if I see the people on my personal Facebook page commenting as such, and what I would do is basically summarize how they're going about it and then go to my platforms and I would question it or put it out like that. And more likely, likely than not, I get a reaction from how I test it and bring it over instead of just me just throwing it up normally or just putting something random in your caption. But you just got to use your own personal uh, Facebook page for those things. Like, if, if I didn't work this job, I probably wouldn't even have a Facebook page or anything like that. So, you know, if I'm, I'm going to utilize it to the death. <laughs> That's a smart strategy. So, um, as 
Okay. In addition to building traffic to our websites, we also are responsible for helping our radio personalities build their personal brands. So what advice, what would be your number one tip to building a personal brand using social media? Um, utilize what you have um, as far as the stations go. You, like if I'm a radio personality and I have been a radio personality, if I know that I could reach people not just online but another platform, then I make sure that I put my content on my platform and then I share it to the other station's platform. Um, same thing as far as Instagram and Twitter. Um, if I post something, make sure that I go on the station account and I retweet it. Uh, because obviously, I mean, let's be real, unless you're um, a, a bigger name radio personality, you know, you're probably, you're not going to have more followers, likes, um, or things of that nature than the station is going to have. So, I mean, I know I know radio personalities who have 400,000 Facebook um, likes, um, where the station don't have, one of my stations has 45. So, it's more smart for us to try to build a relationship with that person, their social media, to get their content, our content that we create and share on their platform. So it's just the opposite. If I have 3,000 Facebook friends, but my station has 150, I need to post on mine and share it on the station. That way, I identify myself with the station. Also, more people are going to see it. You know, you can't just... And then you have some personalities who only use one social media platform. Like, we hear it every Wednesday. Facebook is the number one social media platform, and you can combine Instagram and Twitter, and it's still not beating Facebook. So you can't just, just because you think all of the young folks there, you just can't be like, I'm just going to utilize this. You got to utilize, utilize all the platforms, link back, and talk to the people on all of them. And if you are a personality that, that's lacking to utilize all of that combined is like Captain Planet, you know? <laughs> Get all of those people together, you know, when they power combined, Captain Planet. So that's how you got to utilize social. Like, I'm doing that right now. As we speak. <laughs> I'm looking at you with your phone in your hand. <laughs> So I wanted to ask, I know social media numbers, especially in this age of influencer marketing, there's monetary benefits to having a large social media following. People are doing a lot of strange things to get their following up. How do you feel about automation? I was doing some research last night, and as many benefits as there are, there are definitely some pitfalls. So how do you feel about automation? Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's with everything when it comes to social, it's a double-edged sword. So um, automation is gold, uh, but you don't necessarily want the computer to tell you what's popping. You know what I'm saying? Just like in real life, we don't want somebody to tell us what's popping. We want to relate to the people what's popping. So, so I think you just need a combination of both. I mean, on my station, I do automate, but at the same time, I make sure I customize my automation. You know, so I think you're going to get more out of it. You tag brands, um, you tag people, places, and things. Um, so that combined with the automation can help. But let's just say, for instance, there's nothing going on in the day. You know, you might go on Twitter, and what's trending is the Dalai Lama cat and um, bottled water. And a no story that you've created is going to be around cat. The Dalai Lama in bottled water. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you just got to make sure that 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 you're you're working with the automation, um, not just leaving it to it um, by you know tagging and create uh, tagging and and working around some of the the captions when it comes to your brand. I mean, other than that, if you see something popping, don't wait till the computer tells you that you know it's, it's popping. You put it out there yourself. I mean, it's a lot of finagling and a lot of trickery when it comes to this. I mean, we essentially have the power to make something pop or not pop. Um, so you want to put that power in your hands, too. It's almost like you're an overlord or something. I don't, don't want to use the word God, but I say they like the overlord. Um, you could be a little G-God. You just pop something, you know, in the little 
the, the joint and now all of a sudden, you know what I'm saying, it's voila. So I take pride in that, that I can make people mad, like I'm going to have to speak for right now. <laughs> All right. That's a good tip, but I definitely probably should have used the word bots, right? I mean, the type of automation where a user can go into a platform and put in key hashtags and they're automatically liking tons of pictures at a time yeah. to get new followers. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. That's, that's, yeah, yeah it's, the same, it's the same with that, too. I mean, because when, I mean, it's a, it's at the end of the day, it's, it's artificial intelligence. You know what I'm saying? So whether it's an automated stream or it's a bot going up and it a like certain things or whatever, what if it's something not going on that day and then the bot liking the random stuff that hurts you? You know what I'm right. saying? You, it, it's, it's likely ways around everything. You just have to have moderation. I guess that's the better word for me to use. Like, use it in moderation. You don't want to just rely on it. Because if you're just relying on that, just like on, just like you just relying on you posting content, or you liking, or you doing all of these things, it's gonna be ten fault either. So it's, it's, you have to have a healthy dose of all of those things. And when you finally get in your rhythm, it's basically it's gonna take your platforms from zero to sixty real quick. So just don't rely on one thing. You just have to use all things in moderation, whether it's bot social media automation, your friends, you know, sharing and all of that stuff. Because, you know, just as well as it can work one day, it cannot work the next day. You can be walking around here frustrated and stuff, and that's not healthy at all either. Not at all. So I'm not going to hold you too much longer. This was a really informative chat. I appreciate your time. But let everybody know where they can keep up with you on social media and leave us with one last thought as it relates to social media. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, everything is J-R-Bang, J-R-B-A-N-G. Um, I utilize my social media in, in a hilarious way, or some people say ignorant because they're ignorant, and um, um, that's part of my brand. Um, and that would be what I would leave people with. Know your brand, know your demographics. Too many people out here that's just trying to draw straws or throw, throw things on the wall and Know who you're reaching, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm arguing about power right now for a reason. Like, power puts on their show at 12 o'clock at night for a reason. Because they want you, by the morning, they want everybody to be talking about stars and power. They want you to be their mouthpiece. HBO didn't do it with The Wire. They don't do it with Insecure. And I'm talking about black programming, so to speak. No, they don't do it with Snowfall or FX. They don't do it with none of these shows, but they do it for power. Why? Because if I watch it at 12, I know that the demographic that I'm reaching is going to be all over social media talking about it by 8 o'clock a.m. And it's either going to be why y'all spoiling it or why y'all... Or why do you care we spoil it? Because they know the demographic that they're trying to reach. They know the people, and they know the age, and they know everybody's on social media. So being that they know this, they're able to capitalize on it when the show actually airs at like 8 o'clock. So we've been talking about power and stars all day. It's been in our mouths on a Sunday all day. And they know about this because they know their demographic. And I don't know if you remember... Uh, when we were at the DC premiere, I don't know if you saw like their social media team in the corner um, doing a couple of things. Like they they have a team around them that knows what's going on and they know how to reach the people. So you can't run a business social digital uh, like social media. Um, you can't run your own social media if you don't know who you're reaching. So go to Facebook Insights and just look at your Facebook like friends list in general. And you can tell that I, I got the majority of guys on my Facebook page, and they're around 25. So I'll say they're around the 25 to 54, uh, the 25 to 48 demo because I got a couple of old folks, my aunties and uncles. So I know if I put Nicki Minaj up there, people are going to talk about that more than if I put Patty LaBelle up there, unless we talk about her pies because everybody loves 
the pies during the Christmas season, the Thanksgiving season. You've got to know that. And if you don't know those things, you're gonna you're gonna be around here acting like, you know, somebody stole your cat. <laughs> All right, everybody, we were just kicking it with J.R. Bang. He really is the plug on his social media stuff, so keep in touch with him. I watched Power this morning because of the live stream that he shared. Wink, wink. So follow him. He knows what he's talking about. Good dude. And he's popping. This was, in case you missed it, Social Sundays with Bobby Penn right here on Facebook Live. I'll catch y'all next Sunday. All right? Peace.